All right, and welcome back to Subnautica with Bugateer. All right, so last time we went to the Aurora and we got ourselves uh, quite a bit more of equipment, got the engines fixed so the radiation will dissipate. And with that done, now we're really kind of uh, going to settle into exploration mode now, which is a good thing because I really enjoy the exploration in this game a lot. So what we're going to do today is go on a little bit of a wreck diving expedition. And uh, that's wreck with a W, not with an R. Although, I guess actually technically wreck has an R in it, but not the point. Alright, so I have gone ahead and between episodes I went out and I uh, marked several of the wrecks nearby. Hopefully ones that are going to have stuff that we need. Because uh, I want to expand the base. There's a couple little more items well, actually a couple big items. We need to get a moon pool so that we have a place that we can dock our Seamoth. We need to get a modification console so we can start to get some of the better uh, pieces of kit. We can make some upgrades to some of the things we've got. And, oh, right, we need an alien containment because I want to start my very own full-sized aquarium, not the little ones that we've got right now. So we're going to start off by heading to the Koosh Wreck, as I've called it. And this is a wreck in the Koosh zone near the Aurora's bow. Oh, hello. That is, let's see here, yep, Eclipse. These are always kind of pretty cool. Just total darkness comes on real fast and then right back to daylight. All right, so if you need to find the Koosh zone and you don't feel like uh, trying to mess around, if you go to the Aurora's bow, and then you pretty much head directly west from it, you're going to come onto the Koosh zone and to the Koosh wreck. So, pretty easy wreck to find, and that's where we're going to head to first. Alright, so here we are coming up on the Koosh wreck, and if you're wondering what a Koosh is, well, those purple sparkly ball things are Koosh, and that's what gives the zone its name. Don't particularly know if they're good for anything. They're not much in the way of food, and they're just, well, they're just pretty. And in this area, one of the big things we've got to worry about is these guys over here. These are bone sharks who have one of the most obnoxious, yep, there it is, calls in the game. Makes you very nervous. Now, thankfully, the Koosh wreck is up high enough in the zone that we don't really see many of the other primary predators in the zone too much all the way up here if you go deeper into the Koosh zone oh, that's right this wreck sits right next to a hydrothermal vent so nice and toasty warm now where is the entrance oh here it is all right I'm gonna snuggle up close and hop out oh, come on let go ah all right there we go so here we go into the wreck. I actually brought. Oh wow, that man, that makes a difference. That makes a difference. Holy cow! Oh, went right. By. Alien containment. Oh, that's what I want. That's what we're out here for. But wow, that is that's a light. That is a light and a half. Alien containment, man. We come in the front door, and right off the bat, we find them. Two! Okay, one thing to note. Um, I'm actually using the rebreather right now. The radiation is dissipated, so I can use the rebreather uh, to help me out, increase my time at depth. But I've still brought along two O2 tanks, because we're going to be going to some pretty deep locations. Alright, so what do we have in this room? We have... Another alien containment fragment, which we have... Yeah, we already got that. And another one, okay. I'm sensing a theme here in this wreck. All right, already got that. Yeah, already got all that. So now, oh! Huh, light stick fragment. All right, so let's grab this door. Get that pushed open, see what's on the other side. Oh, way into the wreck from below. Another alien containment fragment. 
Holy cow. This is kind of getting silly. How many possible alien containment fragments can you need in one spot? Hmm. Now one thing about Rex is it is very easy to get turned around in them. Oh, here we go. That is why we brought along the laser cutter. door and another alien containment fragment wow light stick fragments a few chairs and other odds and ends nothing huh can't hmm door shows a green light but I can't actually use it all right well let's see here actually I think that pretty much it. Yeah, can't cut through that door, which is a little bit weird when you think about it. I mean, if I can cut through the door when it's welded shut and damaged, why can't I cut through the door when it's not? Alright, so that looks like most of this wreck. Let's, let's take a quick look around. Oh, hello. That is a pair of amp eels and nasty teeth and electricity coursing down their sides if you could not guess that these guys are dangerous maybe Subnautica is not the game for you so yeah we want to give them a wide berth oh well I mean I guess if you needed some of the interior furniture like a grow bed or a desk or some chairs this might be a good wreck for you uh, Oh, let's chance it. Alien containment. I don't know why I'm even surprised. Should not even be surprised a little bit by that. All right, so you know what? Wow, okay, 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 okay. Leaving, leaving, leaving. All right, all right, all right. Man. Yeah, you can see how big the ampules are when you compare them to the, the bone sharks. They are not pleasant at all. Okay, so after this, we're now going to head for the mushroom. Wow, okay. First time, what got all these ampules up here? All right, we're out of here. We're heading to ah, the mushroom wreck. And the mushroom wreck is exactly what it says. It is a wreck in the mushroom forests. And the mushroom forests which we're going to have to go through one part of the mushroom forest, is actually one of my favorite biomes in the game. There's just, yeah, they're just, they're just cool. <laughs> There's no other way to describe it. The mushroom forest is just cool. And uh, I think you're probably going to love this wreck. This, this wreck in the mushroom forest is one of my favorite wrecks in the game. Uh, just because of the way it wound up, so... Now I'm going to take a nice long trip over to the Mushroom Forest to see this wreck. And yeah, in case you're wondering, my game has gotten very laggy and unfortunately very unstable lately, which makes it kind of a pain to play. That's why I'm taking it... Uh, uh, see what I'm talking about? Look at this thing. Look at it. <laughs> that has got to be one strong tree because that thing got blown out of the aurora when it exploded and it coasted all the way where about what is that over two kilometers from the aurora at this point so uh, yep probably doesn't help I'm a terrible driver but anyways got blown all the way from the aurora all the way over to here and this tree caught it huh all right so Got one access way here. Hop out and grab that. So we got one access way there. What is that? Oh my goodness. Is that? Ha ha ha! Propulsion cannon fragment. Awesome. 
All right. All righty. Got a propulsion cannon now. Whew, we're gonna have some fun. Can build a stasis rifle and a propulsion cannon and an alien containment. We are in business. Is there another way to get in? Does not look like it. Yeah, it looks like that. Oh. Yeah, in case you missed the first one, there's the other one. There's another propulsion cannon fragment. Can you come in the top? Oh, you can. Okay. You can. So we will. All right. We're going to hop out. And you know what? The first thing we're going to do we're going to eat and drink. And then we're going to whip out our light stick and another propulsion cannon fragment. What do you want to bet this is the propulsion cannon wreck? All right. Let's take a look. In here. And another propulsion cannon fragment. Goodness. And another one. Wow. Okay. Oh, and the PDA. I'm going to start trying to take... Huh. Okay. Doesn't tell us which one it is. Alright, I don't know what that is. Alright. Door off of a locker. The locker. Uh, propulsion cannon because... Can't be subtle about it. We're going to give you 50 of them. jammed up too. Huh. Welcome aboard, Captain. Well, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. That was a little disappointing because you had this nice big chunk of the ship. It's upside down, which should give you some nice variety. And yeah, the interior spaces were pretty limited. Not to mention, it's like, okay, yeah, we get it. Propulsion cannon. Wow. Okay, so we're going to head back home. Next place we're going to go is to the Blood Kelp Wreck. All right, and that's pretty deep, and that's why we brought along two oxygen tanks. But before we go there, I actually want to show you guys a zone that I haven't taken you to before. And that is the Sparse Reef between my close to the floater island you, you're, you're typically regardless of where you're going to spawn um, at the start of the game you're going to have to go through the sparse reef to get to floater island so, so we needed ah yeah here we go and really ah, ah go away you ruin everything okay here we go we're on the edge of the grassy plains and the sparse reef. All right, and you can tell you're on the edge when you start to see these big spires. And ah, this is where you find the filtration machine, or at least this is where I found it. All right, so this area is good to find the filtration machine. And let's see here, power cell charger. All right, so the power cell charger and the filtration machine are both here on the transition between the grassy plains and the sparse reef on the way to floater island now this place also has a few other species of um, coral we haven't seen before you've got plenty of reginalds you've got access to salt limestone these are mercury deposits and we don't have any use for mercury yet so but it's here and if you're like me you're going to have to collect yourself a uh, sizable stockpile even if you've got no use for it just because you automatically do that in any survival crafting game and you've also got uh, plenty of quartz and spade fish so there's actually quite a lot of resources out here and very little in the way of hostile mobs and when I say very little I mean practically none now, one of the reasons we didn't bother coming out here yet is you can see the depth. We're getting pretty deep, and you just would not be able to explore this 
with uh, without the seamoth. You would absolutely need the seamoth. And even going down farther, we're going to really get into an area where you need the pressure compensator off of the uh, you need the pressure compensator off of the Aurora to really get down. And here we are. This uh, my frame rate uh, pop in is still brutal in this uh, game, but here we are out on the sparse reef and the sparse reef absolutely lives up to its name it is a reef that is extremely sparse there's just not much out here aside from well resources I mean like I said you've got lithium you've got salt you've got quartz you have uh, mercury you've got limestone chunks Oh, and you've got bleeders. Okay, so you're not completely free of aggressive species. You do have some bleeders out here. But that's about it. And, oh, I love that. I love that kind of ghostly spires in the distance look. Very cool. Okay. So. All right, now we're actually descending into, or descending towards the blood kelp zone. But in this zone... A scanner room fragment, okay. Did not realize that was out here, but hey, scanner room fragment, awesome. We love fragments. And the thermal plant. Oh, okay. The thermal plant's one of your power generation options. You remember that thermal vent that uh, we saw near the Koosh wreck? Yeah, you can actually build something like a thermal plant down near that and get elect and get power from it. Uh, pretty much a permanently uh, renewable source of power, I think. Uh, I haven't done too much with it because you really have to build right on top of those thermal po power plant or thermal uh, vents to get the power, and then you got to transfer it with. Uh, got to transfer it. Now. And then you got to use the power transfer pylons to get it to where your base is. So, personally, I've never messed with them too much. Because my personal favorite way to get electricity is either with solar panels, if I'm building a shallow base, because you never have to do anything with them. You just uh, build the solar panels and they make you power forever. Golly, stinkins. Holy cow, what the well? Okay. That was a particularly aggressive sand shark. But I like solar panels. It's an upside down sand shark. I like solar panels because they're kind of a set and forget kind of thing. Yeah, there's the wreck down there. You can just build the solar panels and you forget about them. You don't have to worry about them anymore. Once they're built, they're, you're done. Which I like. But the thermal power plant's the same way, but you got a bit more. There's a fragment. You're a bit more restrictive in where you can actually uh, build it. But, let's see. Let me stop. It's a scanner room fragment. Okay. I think that'll complete the scanner room. Nope. One more. All right. Uh, maybe? 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 Oh, with nuclear reactor. There we go. There's my personal favorite. You build a nuclear reactor, and you just don't care anymore. Yeah, you got to use nuclear fuel rods, but you don't have, they don't have to be replaced that often. And it doesn't care how deep you are. It doesn't care how dark it is. It doesn't care how cold it is. Splitting atoms makes electricity all the time. And that makes it uh, my personal favorite power plant for building anywhere down deep like to get this stuff finished off before we go down to the wreck. There we go. Three Mile Island, here we come. Yeah, there we go. See, this is one of the reasons why I brought along the extra oxygen tanks. Because this wreck is fairly deep and... Where are we at? This wreck's pretty deep. But we 
we've still got to get down to it. All right, and in we go. All right, modification station, perfect. This is what we need to start making mods for our and a moon pool fragment. Oh, this is perfect. All right, moon pool is what we use for docking our seamoth to the base, and the modification station is what we use for fixing up a lot of our stuff. All right, we are at 50% on the moon pool. How are we doing on oxygen? We're still doing, oh, Cyclops pressure compensator, awesome. You know what? side doesn't look like it so we're going to go back in from the top and oh, mr. fragment modification station oh yeah we're done on that one not much but modification station anything else much nope like it. And this is the bottom of the wreck. All right. Oh, here we go. More fragments. It's moon pool. There we go. Mod station and moon pool fragments. So we are actually. Sealed door. Well, I'm going to have to find out what's behind that before we can leave. Alright, uh, get back up out of here. Go get some oxygen. This place is creepy. Alright, there we go. Uh, not going to lie. I really wish this thing was faster. Alright. Oh, this looks like a kind of a, another entrance way. Modification station, modification station. Not. Between the modification. Spine fish. You know what? I'm going to try to grab another one of those. I like having enough. Uh, have my own little menagerie. Now that I have my alien containment, I can throw those guys in there. And read them. And the eagle eye among you may have spotted that, uh, yep, I have definitely been to some of these zones previously. But, I actually managed to hold off on most of it for the stuff that we were trying to get. So now, let's dock and actually get some, thing, some of this stuff built. Okay, so the very first thing we're going to build is a modification station, which is going to be pretty important. So we're going to need a wiring kit, a computer chip, and two titanium. Alright... computer chip parts. And I think a wiring kit is two silver. So there we go, one computer chip, one wiring kit. And I actually want to put it right here. All right, so go down here and yep, got everything we need. Alrighty. And one modification station. Ah, beautiful. Now these are going to be all upgrades to your individual gear, like your survival knife. You can either harden it, uh, requires a diamond, does more damage, and lasts longer. And thermal blade is a, needs a battery, and you get a essentially a heated blade. Air tanks, hallelujah! Uh, we can either do with a with a high capacity tank, which increase your air capacity, or a light tank, which actually remember it makes it smaller. 
Right, then the fins, you've got the ultra guide fins, which make you faster. And swim charge fins. Wait a minute, I have fins on. Huh. These wirelessly charge your tool, your held tool, while you're swimming. And some people call these broken because if you put these on with a sea glide, it vastly increases your range. And the propulsion cannon, my favorite bit, making the repulsion cannon. Um, the normal propulsion cannon will grab somebody and pull them close to you, and then you can fire them away. With this, it just skips to the good part and blasts them away. Got some Cyclops upgrades and some Seamoth upgrades. Improve your pressure compensators. And this is actually something we're going to want to do pretty soon so that we can take our Seamoth down deeper. Uh, a good example is on that Blood Kelp wreck. If we had this pressure compensator mark too, we would have been able to drive the Seamoth right down to it. So let's actually get some of this stuff made. Hardened survival knife. Which is... Eh, oh well. Not terribly exciting. And our O2 tank, which we need... What do we need? For a high capacity... Yeah, there you go. Now with this one tank, we've actually now got as much capacity as the old um, double tank setup had. And we're going to grab this. Did I get enough? Yeah, I did. And throw that mercury back in there. To make another high capacity air tank. And we're not at 165. So that is a very good thing. Let's see what else do I want? To, you know what? Yeah, I want it. I'm gonna do it. So come over here, grab the last of my table coral, some of my excessively large amount of quartz, and my diminishing stock of silver. And now I have a repulsion cannon. Yeah, that's the good stuff right there. All right, now last, let's take our fins out. And what do we need for those ultra glide fins? We need double silicone rubber, which, hey, what do you know? I happen to have. Oh, that's right, that's right. Let's take a look at the moon pool. So we're going to need four titanium ingots, four lubricant, and an advanced wiring. All right, so obviously I've made a few changes to the base since the last time I recorded. And the reason for this is that the moon pool was just refusing to fit where I wanted to put it. And I wanted to expand the base somewhat anyways. But the moon pool in particular gave me kind of a reason to go ahead and do it. So I did. And coming back now here, um, several hours later uh, we're ready to try to put the moon pool in and it is just the most finicky uh, module to attach to a base in this game and I kind of understand why it's a complicated module a lot of moving parts but oh it will drive you absolutely buggy so this is where we're gonna have it attach eventually but I want to show you the problem with just putting it in as is oh are we getting an eclipse? Yes, we are. Yeah, I love eclipses. Just all of a sudden it gets dark. So, all right. So here we go. And this is the moon pool in all of its glory. And as you get, and uh, you can see here that it dug out some of this cliff around my base to make room for it. So you don't have to worry too much. If it looks like it's going to get built into the rock, don't worry. It won't. But... Psychological discomfort. Hmm. Anthropomorphiz anthropomorphizing an inanimate object. I don't know what they're talking about, Seamoth. Alright, so come around here and let me show you why I don't like this. Um, well, first of all, this is cool. Come up Welcome and board, boom. <laughs> there we go. Hauls a Seamoth up and into the base. And fun thing is that the this will recharge the Seamoth. It'll actually draw current from
from the base to recharge the CMOS to get it all the way up to full. And we've even got the connection to the base with the bulkhead that I built in place because I can't help but make my life more difficult by adding parts onto the base I don't really need. They just take longer to get around. But anyways, now let's launch the Seamoth and you'll see what happens. We get in, it drops down, and... Okay, it doesn't do it nearly as bad as it did the last time when I was testing this. But yeah, you see how it just kind of drops you and bang right into the bottom? Yeah, I don't like that. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to take advantage of the moon pools bulldozer like uh, effect on its surroundings all right so we get out and this works because you get a hundred percent of the materials back so if you didn't get a hundred percent of the materials back this wouldn't really be doable because with all the lubricant and wiring kits and uh, titanium ingots it takes <laughs> this is a lot of stuff that you uh, could lose so all right so the hole remains which we want all right so let's see there we go and no 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 come on do it again come on uh this this thing nope the, and, there we go so this is the next level below where it would have been before and as we get close to getting this thing finished haha it bulldozes everything out of the way now we've got a much deeper uh hole underneath the moon pool so now once again disassemble it yeah this is kind of a pain but again you only got to build this one time so yeah you can kind of put up with it and then we'll come back and there we go finished moon pool with enough room to not get dropped right into the seabed every time we deploy from it beautiful Alright, we'll hop back in our Seamoth, and this time, <laughs> we will fly right up underneath it, and get grabbed. You don't have to be too particular about where you get swung in. It'll grab you from wherever you're at, and there we go. So inside the moon pool, you've got these uh, broad walls around here that you can actually build things on. So the prompt looks a little weird. you got that green above you, but go right in here, and you got yourself a window and then most importantly we're gonna build a vehicle modification station this is what let this will let us build uh, modifications for the Seamoth as well as change the color because everything being white is kinda of wearing on me so boom there we go Seamoth docked alright now let's come around here and just like the control panels on the Aurora you can touch everything just by pointing out with the cursor so submersible name in honor of this game right now a lag spike okay now let's see here let's give ourselves oh there you go see you got the uh, I don't know what that's called saturation anyways you can mess with the uh, saturation and I personally like being able to and easy to find submersibles. So we are going to go the bright safety orange. I'm going to leave the name in black. I'm going to make this stripe purple because, you know, I like hideous things apparently. The interior, I'm going to darken that up a little bit. And uh, this stripe, we will, you know what? Let's make that black. There we go. So now we are done. Look at that. <laughs> Lag spike. There you go. Sucker's no longer the default white. You've now got a different colored sea moth. Awesome. And over here, you've got the fabricator that lets you build the various different parts for the sea moth. Quite a few modules in here. And you can even build exosuit mod modules. And yep, torpedoes. It's actually kind of a fun little thing to build. So there we go. That's the modification station. 
and this is the moon pool built and you can dock both uh, submersibles and the prawn suit in here which we're actually going to have to build the cyclops and the prawn suit here pretty soon oh and another nice little feature of the moon pool you can just dive out of the bottom of it to get in the water no more needing to hatch all right so that is the moon pool all right so after we get the uh, moon pool built, it's time to build the alien containment, one of my other favorite things to do in this game. And I know I have a lot of favorites, but this one is actually really a lot of fun. So right now we've got an entire multi-purpose room here and another one above it set aside for the uh, alien containment. So all right, get ourselves back a little bit because we need some room and boom. Yeah, the alien containment takes up pretty much the entirety of a multi-purpose room. Uh, it's tight enough in here that you don't even really want to build anything along the walls because it's very, a little bit hard to maneuver around. And we've got the second one above, so you get this really cool, you can either walk on top of it, which is always fun, or you can expand it by throwing another one on top of it. And this will join the alien containment above and below ah, into one gigantic aquarium. The only problem, we have no way to get into it. So one of the other things you have to do, build yourself a hatch. And now, you're inside the alien containment. Uh, you are swimming, you, will, you can drown in alien containment, but, you know, don't do that. And you have a planter where you can drop down pretty much any kind of coral that you want to. And you can also release fish and eggs in here, and the eggs will hatch. And even if it is a normally aggressive species, inside the alien containment, they will not attack you. So you can have things like stalkers and sand sharks and bone sharks and ampules in here that are completely harmless which actually makes it a very good way to scan them for the database. Uh, a single level alien containment has a maximum of 10 creatures that it can support, and each level you add adds another 10. So this can support 20 creatures. And if you throw two of one type of creature into the alien containment, they will actually start breeding, and you will wind up with a steady supply of whatever fish it is you threw in there. Now we're not going to complete, we're not going to populate it yet because I want to be careful about what I throw in there. I want to toss in eggs first, let the eggs hatch, and then throw in these spe these other fish that will just sort of fill up the extra room. Uh, once you get to 20 fish, they stop breeding, so you're not going to run yourself, uh, you're not going to overload the containment just by letting them be in there. They'll stop breeding once you hit 20 so we do want to kind of make a continuous source of Reginald's for eating and you know some of the other ones like uh, well, probably the whole fish I really like whole fish okay so I went downstairs and I went to my egg room and I grabbed up four eggs and I know what these are going to hatch into but I'm going to leave it a surprise for next episode I'm going to go ahead and toss these in and then uh, next episode we'll take a look and see what they see what hatches so we're going to come in here, access my PDA, and just dump them. Yep, nothing fancy, just drop them off. And they will hatch. Alright, and we'll also decorate, probably. So next time we come back, Caution. I'll have some... Mild dehydration detected. Fluid intake <sighs> recommended. Yeah, yeah, Siri. Okay. So, got the eggs in the aquarium. And those take about four days to hatch. So, and that is going to be it for this episode. So, next time we will take a look at getting the Cyclops and the Prawn suit built. And, well, that will pretty much wrap up the how to portion of this game. Because at that point, it's mostly about exploring the rest of the, exploring the, rest of the map, building new bases, and seeking out different uh, challenges. So, after that, it'll turn convert to pretty much a Let's Play. So, for now, this has been Subnautica with Bogatir. I'll catch you guys next time.